Then try to work on the ideas to make yourself valuable in the marketplace. Here's something to remember under personal development, some things I had to learn. First, steps to success. First of all, you need good ideas. Just decide right now you're going to accelerate your plan for collecting good ideas. Ideas for your life, ideas for your health, ideas for your marriage, your relationships. Ideas that stimulate. One idea sometimes lead to the, leads to the next, needs to the next. And the four or five ideas in the future that really thrust acceleration into your life, you couldn't have gotten unless you went through the first one and the second one and the third one. Next, you need good plans. So we're going to talk about time management and game plans tomorrow. You need a good health plan. Traveling around the world, you can imagine the kind of health plan I have to have. If I didn't have a superb, extreme, got to underline the word extreme, if I didn't have a superb, extreme health plan, do you think I could travel all over the world? People look at my calendar and say, impossible. I'm the only one that can do it. Everyone else is too young. <laughs> Incredible. But I've got to be extremely healthy. I can't let up at all in terms of diet and nutrition, exercise, all that stuff in order to stay healthy. So a good health plan, a good family plan. Here's a good one, a good marriage plan. Some people just go along married with their fingers crossed. You've got to have a better plan than that. Some are whistling in the dark, hoping everything will work out. Not, not a good plan. You need a good plan for how to use the day. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Best kept secret of the rich, how to use your time. A good plan to meet the right people over the right amount of time to stimulate your life. You need a game plan for lifestyle. We'll talk about that later. So to succeed, we need good ideas and good plans. Here's the next. We have to learn to handle the passing of time. Because all of this takes time to learn, to grow, to change. Getting through the seasons takes time. The spring has a certain amount of time. The summer has time. The harvest has time. The winter has time. Learning to handle the passing of time. Jot this down if you're involved in business. You've got to give your project time. You've got to give your people time. Give people a chance to learn, chance to grow, chance to change. One of the great requirements, especially in such an industrialized, busy, mad, dashing society, and that is to have people patience. First, we exercise it with our children and our family. Getting people to work together, got to have patience, even with your family. If you're involved with independent people, it's, it's a challenge. It's like herding cats, trying to get them to work together. Herding sheep is easy. They very quickly get going the same direction. But try herding cats. It's like your children. Different ages and different personalities and different opinions. To get the family all going the same direction, kind of working together to make things work, I'm telling you, it is a challenge. But if you'll have some patience, you can do it. Now, here's the big one. To have patience with yourself. Give yourself time to learn. Give yourself time to understand good ideas. Give yourself time to make changes and then grow into those changes. Give yourself time to refine your personality to fit the business, whatever business you're engaged in. In some, you may have to speak up a little stronger. In some, you may have to calm down just a little bit more. Just learn to refine your personality and your temperament to suit. All of us can do that, but it takes, it takes time. Have patience with yourself. We had to do that from the beginning. Learning to tie the shoestrings of your shoes. If you try it a couple of times and says, I'll never learn this, it's over. Say, no, you can't go through life with your shoes untied. Come on. Some people, maybe it happens for them a little quicker than others. Some people get the hang of it almost overnight. Someone else, it takes a little longer. If it takes you a little longer, have patience with yourself. Because patience has its own reward. Patience is a virtue of the extraordinary kind. We have to have patience with our employers. We have to have patience with government officials. You've got to have patience with IRS. You've got to have patience with the Army. You've got to have patience with the FBI. 
Here's a good thing to remember while you're exercising patience. Usually enough good people will finally make it right. You just got to jot that down. Usually enough good people will finally make it right. Not everyone in the community is going to toe the line and do the moral thing. But let me tell you what, most will. That's how we create a society that we can live in. Most will. Every teenager will not obey all the rules and regulations and live a model life. Not everyone will, but jot this down. Most will. Enough will. When the good Lord recruited 12, not every disciple, not every one of the 12, but it was enough of the 12 to start a movement that's lasted for 2,000 years. Not everyone, but enough will. There's only been a couple of exceptions to that rule. One was the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah for their evil ways. Abraham had a friend that lived there. And Abraham implored and said, God, if I can go to Sodom and Gomorrah and find 50 righteous people, will you spare the city? And God said, Abraham, you've been such an excellent friend of mine. Yes, I'll spare the city if you can find 50. So he searches the city, can't find 50 good people. Comes back and says, <clears throat> Lord, would you take 40? God says, Abraham, for you, come on, I'll do it. If you can find 40. So he searches for 40, can't find 40. And he comes back and says, would you take 30? Good Lord says, Abraham, only for you will I reduce it to 30. Can't find 30. Can't find 20. Abraham said, this is my last request. Would you take 10? God said, only for you, Abraham. So he went searching for 10, and you know the story. Couldn't find 10. That's the exception to the rule. So he said, Abraham, get your friend Lot and his family out of there because the end has come. But that's the exception to the rule. So jot down the general rule. Most will. In a civilized society, most will obey the rules. In government, most will. Not every senator will, but what? Enough will to build a stable government and a future. Not everyone in the armed forces will, but enough will. Not everyone in the community will, but enough will. Not every teenager in this high school will, but I'm telling you, the most will. And that's how we survive in a civilized society, because most will. And that's a good feeling to know. Most will. Okay. So have patience. Next, under personal development, is learning to solve problems. By the way, having patience with the seasons takes time to develop the crop. You can't plant the seed, dig around it in a few days saying, where is it, where is it? And you can't really help. All you can do is nourish. Some people plant in the spring, leave in the summer. Just haven't got the patience to last. So next comes solving problems, business problems, family problems, personal problems, financial problems, emotional problems, there's all kinds. Here's a good idea I found in solving problems. Every once in a while you've got to, I haven't got it here, but I can just describe it for you. Take a piece of paper, put a line down the center of the paper, and on the left side describe the problem. So just jot that down. A piece of paper in half on the left side describe the problem. Sometimes it's a good idea to take a problem out of your head and put it on paper. We'll talk a little bit more tomorrow about how to think on paper. This is one of the ways to think on paper. Our mind usually is too busy sometimes to sort things out. So if you take it out of your mind, put it on paper, what is the problem? And you should describe to the best of your ability what the problem is. And then ask this question, is that all of it? Because if you're going to prescribe something for the problem, you need to know what all of it is. When you've got it all listed, on the other side now of the paper is called answers and solutions. Problem on one side, answers and solutions on the other side.